we are going to talk about the skills that you need to survive as an international student um, and i think that this is just a very important conversation to have um, in the sense that you know you're essentially packing up your life to go into another country um, to school to get a degree and you're going to be there for a period of time so it is essential that you have certain skills I was going to say life skills but mm, some of them are life skills some of them are not until you move to a different country and you're like mm, maybe i should actually uh learn to do this thing or something so the earlier you knew how to do them the better for you and if you already do then perfect right so without further ado let's jump right into it i'll be talking about four skills right the first thing is knowing how to make hair you might have seen in my previous videos where i talked about learning to braid after i moved to france right and i mean like in nigeria it wasn't like it was my interest or anything like that however i got here and realized that to braid my hair would cost me almost a hundred euros so i went to one of the salons african salon i think the lady was even nigerian and she was going to charge me after negotiation i think 60 euros for the regular bills like the kind that i have on my head now not not less and then she was going to charge me 80 euros for the not less braids and these are prices that are without the extension so i still have to pay for my own extension and the extensions are not really expensive but you would need maybe like three or four depending on the length depending on how full you want it to be so by the time you're paying like Four euros times four that's already like 16 or another 20 euros plus 80 like 100 plus 60 80 same difference right so that it's not sustainable right um as a student i have limited income i have other bills to pay i have other priorities right um so i'm like okay well let's do this like let's figure it out and all that i thought of cutting my hair uh i'm the kind of person that usually cuts my hair like every other year i'm just like it's hair it will grow back i mean that does not include my edges but i digress <laughs> anyway um but then i thought about it that okay i mean i could use activators and try to style it myself but from time to time i would actually need to go into a salon which brings me back to the issue of course i'm like maybe cutting my hair is not the best at this time because i just don't want to have like a regular low cut right um I'm not really a fan of wearing wigs. I do wear wigs, but it's not what I want to wear like all year and all that. So I would actually rather just braid my hair and style it however I want to and all. Um, so it is important that you know how to make hair or you plan for how you're going to fund your hair making or do something that is more lasting. Maybe come with all those uh, fox locks, that can last you like many months if you are comfortable with that i cannot carry any hairstyle like the same thing for six months like my scalp i would need to wash it i would need to do stuff that i'll just be like this hair is so old like i have to get rid of it and all of that so bear that in mind the second thing is learning how to do your nails so back in lagos right i had a monthly hair nails budget like uh just regular now when i get paid i go to the salon do my pedicure like every other two months change my nails every four weeks and all that um but i got here and i was like definitely not so this is how i basically 
had my nails since I came in February. So I came, I think I had like artificial nails when I got here and I, I had that for a couple of weeks. And then after uh, I painted my nails myself a couple of times, like put the stuff here and all. But it's stressful. Like for me, I don't know maybe because I'm just like busy and caught up in a lot of things. I'm just like, nah. So the I have the nail dryer, right? But I realized that it functions better for gel polish than for regular polish. And when I do gel polish, it is worse for me because it's more difficult to take out and all of that. So I'm just like, ah. So even though I have things, many times when I want to do it, I just paint my toenails and I'm just like, leave my hands because when I wash play two times like this, it will start chipping and then I'll be back to, oh, I need to do my nails. So I just leave that. Um, I think that to do your nails here, it, it basically depends on where you're going. Um, but a friend of mine went for a touch up and I think she was telling me that they did just, can't remember what she did, painted like mannequin and painting, like not fixing, just painting probably like 45 euros or something like that. Uh, but I met someone at work and she was telling me that, oh, where she does has is probably like 25 euros to fix like normal i don't know if they call it acrylic but the normal plastic nails i'm painting and i was like ah, 25 is not bad right like 25 is actually not bad but then i'm like okay 25 times 12 months in a year i could do something else with that money uh which is like if it's the 25 that i'm spending how much is 25 25 Okay, 25 is more expensive than my Lagos budget. 25 is probably maybe like 15K roughly. Oh wait, one euro is now 700. So yeah, almost like, yeah, like 17K-ish. So it's still a lot. Um, so I'm just like, eh. Then I met someone else who does like, her nails are always on point, always nice. And I'm like, where did you do your nails? And she's like, I did it myself. You said what? <laughs> she said I need to buy myself. So I'm like, this is so nice. So uh, she was like, oh, she's not from here. She's from Portugal, I think. So she's like, every time she goes home, she buys like the stuff and brings it here and just does it by herself. Unfortunately, a lot of these skills, like when you learn to do it by yourself or for yourself, a lot of people don't know how to do it um, for other people. For instance, the hair on my head, I made it myself, but I'm not sure that I can confidently say I can braid hair for someone else. Um, so she's like, oh, I can do it for myself, but I don't know how to do it for other people. But that the next time she goes home, she was going to buy me uh, like nails and stuff. And I could just try it out and see whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay, I could try that. But even if for nothing else, like Christmas and my birthday in January, I'm going to take the 25 euro offer. Okay. I just like, hmm. I got here in February, so essentially it's been almost a year, almost a year since I had my nails done. So it would just be nice to have like some pampering on that level. So I will definitely do that. Um, so yeah, that's that about nails. The third thing, and I think the most important skill ever is knowing how to cook. Cooking is definitely a life skill, right? Like, it doesn't matter what your gender is, you should know how to cook. Whether or not you enjoy it is another story entirely because I personally do not, like, I hate it. It's stressful for me to cook. Like, I would rather do anything else. I just think that it's not worth the time and effort put into it. Like, I spent two hours cooking something and it's just, like, one pot that I can finish in a day or two and I'm like, that, like, do you know how much work I could do in two hours? Like, this is <laughs> this is not worth my time. And I've always had that impression. So I'm just like, oh, what? it's not sustainable. Back in Nigeria, I was like, ah, when I blow, I'm going to have a shape that will be either cooking for me or bringing food in my house. Like, I just need food that is not stale. So maybe something that would last like a week or whatever. But then when you move to another country, especially as a student on a lean budget, it's not practical. I don't even think it's realistic to eat out all the time, right? So if you wanted to buy maybe a plate of pasta or something using 
Uber Eats or any of those food ordering apps, it will probably cost you, like if you search properly, it will probably cost you about 15 euros and up. Um, and that's minus delivery, that's minus whatever service charge or tax that they will add to it or something. So you might end up spending like 20 euros, right? Um, so 20 euros in itself seems like hmm, it's not a lot of money. But then imagine doing that like twice a day for a whole week. Like you've spent 40 times 7, right? You're going to be broke in no time. So I think I've probably cooked more in my entire life. No. I've cooked more this year than I have in my entire life. That's what I meant to say. Because in Lagos, right, I will order soup bowls um, and just like make other foods with it. And maybe when I'm in the mood, I'll make like the things I enjoy eating, yam porridge, uh, big cupcakes, just random stuff, right? Gizdodo, all those things. Um, and by the way, I make a mean jello fry. So like not liking to cook doesn't mean that I don't know how to cook, but like I said, I don't think that the effort justifies the end result uh, or how long it lasts and all. Um, but yeah, since I moved here, um, I sat up, I was just like, <laughs> nobody is spending 40 euros per day. We don't have the money, let's start from there. So um, yeah, I've just essentially been cooking a lot more. Um, and I think I've saved myself like a ton of money. Lucky for me, my student job is also at a restaurant. So I get like a free meal every time I work. So I'm like, oh, this is good. <laughs> this is like good food, free good food, right? Um, yeah, so there's that as well. And essentially learn how to cook or reignite that passion. Or if you don't like it, just prepare your mind that you will have to do it if you move here, right? Um, I mean, like even when you graduate and get a proper job, I don't think it makes sense to be eating out all the time. Um, and unfortunately, this is not the UK, right? Where there are loads of Nigerians and loads of places where like on Saturday morning, you could just see somebody selling jollof rice and a and akara like on the road. When I saw that, I was like, huh? <laughs> Where do you people think you are? But apparently, UK people or Nigerians in the UK are not our mates, okay? Uh, those things in France exist, but are very scarce, right? Um, so I know of someone that sells soup bowls or food um, on one of the WhatsApp groups that I belong to, but that's just one person. And I think I have come across maybe three African, no, three Nigerian food stores. Let me not say African because there are many African food stores like Senegalese, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, it's still not like my taste. It's not what I'm used to and all that. So like, I wouldn't go out of my way to go and spend money to buy Senegalese food. Like, why would I do that? Um, and all. So, um, where was I? Yeah. So the Nigerian food places, right? There's one that I saw like not too far from me, but from the first day that I saw that place, the door has been locked like ever since. I've never seen that store open. So I don't know if they closed or the person traveled or they moved and they haven't like rebranded the place or related to someone else. I really don't know. Uh, but then I was ranting about this to one of my friends in Lagos and he was like, ah, let's check Instagram, blah, 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 blah. And then we found a couple of places on Instagram and they had like, a nice menu right including suya and all of them like uh -uh, this is nice but trust me i haven't gone there like i'm just like it's in the eight it's far it's not that far like if you're around here you know that it's not that far. i could literally get there in 30 40 minutes but i'm just like it's too much effort it's not that deep um so maybe i got used to cooking for myself or whatever but yeah there's that so definitely definitely learn how to cook there are African stores where you can buy food stuff, right? So when I say that African food stores are scarce, I'm talking about the cooked food, okay? Uh, there is one of the African stores where I buy raw stuff from, and I got there one day and saw jello fries in their fridge. <laughs> and like, I don't even know, the little takeaway packs 
that we have in Nigerian e trees, not the tall ones, the small ones. And then there was jello rice in it. Nothing special. It wasn't like there was plenty of meat or anything. And it was five euros. I was just like, why would anybody buy that? Like, I don't care if it's the best tasting jello rice ever. Like that plate is too small to be five euros. What? So obviously, if they keep selling or they keep cooking it, it means that people are buying, but that shall not be me. So yeah, definitely learn to cook, uh, bring stuff if you can, um, and just like plan to save your money and use it on better things. You can travel, you can buy clothes, you can have other experiences. Um, yeah, so do that. Lastly today, I will talk about the sewing skill. So again, this is not the UK, so i don't know that many people are like actively sewing new things to wear because a lot of people here just wear like jeans and top and whatever um but people also want to adjust things that they bought and it's not like exactly their size but it's not too big that they want to return it blah blah, blah. there is a clothes adjustment shop not far from my house. I said one day, I was like, this is so interesting. But I feel like from the reports I've heard, not from that particular store, but from people that have gone to adjust things around Paris, it could cost you like adjusting one trouser leg or something like it's too long. Get me turn it in or something like that could cost you 10 euros. 10 euros is a lot of money considering that a portable sewing machine costs like 100 euros. So like you could basically buy the machine if you knew how to sew and do these things by yourself and even do it for other people and probably charge the same 10 euros because oh they know you you could just chill at your house while you do it for them or um you could do it for less so that you even attract more people and all of that. Um so if you're into that, if you know how to sew, blah blah blah, you can definitely consider that if you can make other things that are not maybe necessarily Ankara or lace, but you can sew maybe like a nice skirt or pants or whatever for someone, then you can also do that and make it like a source of income if you have the time. Um, yeah, so those are the things uh, that I want to talk about today. If there are other skills that you think that are essential for international students in any country, please feel free to share in the comment section. And if this is your first time here, definitely welcome. I hope that you enjoyed this. Remember to subscribe, like, and share with your family and friends. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back yet again. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Abiento.